Very warm welcome to the Trading Bell Show. Thank you so much for your valued company. My name is Maina Shege. Tonight, we look at two sectors, the banking sector and the manufacturing sector, speaking about what is lying in the future. We start with the state of the manufacturing sector from a commentary from the head of research policy and advocacy at the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, that is Job One Johi. Many thanks for joining us, Job. So, Job, what is the status of the manufacturing sector and how are you as a sector reacting to this new news that we are seeing of the new introduction of the excise you know, duty. So from where you sit in, please paint for us a picture of what's happening. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, 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 as far as the excess duty is concerned, it's, it's being introduced or the excess regime is being enhanced at the moment. Uh, they have been various handles. Uh, for instance, from the manufacturing perspective, uh, we have uh, uh, been grappling with various issues that are COVID related. For instance, as far as our, input, uh, our inputs are concerned, we have seen uh, the increment on the cost of the raw materials by about 137%. Uh, talk of the freight cost, uh, how we bring our goods from Asia uh, to from Europe uh, to country, when talking about importation of machineries, importation of the raw materials and intermediate products. We have seen an increment by 232% in the last one and a half years. Uh, the exit rate has uh, uh, deteriorated against uh, importation of raw materials, uh, but uh, I would say it has been okay for uh, for exportation, but now we are a net importer uh, of, uh, of anything in this, in this country. So depreciation by 7% in the last one and a half years also has had some effect. Diesel, last one year, we have seen, uh, and it's an input for manufacturing, uh, uh, the price increasing by almost 44%. Uh, so all these have been challenges that we are grappling with. And on top of it now, we have seen through the Finance Act uh, 2021, the introduction of various excise uh, taxes or duties. Uh, like now we have 10% that has come on plastic or ten, another 10% has come on resin. 10% uh, has come on super absorbent polymer that uh, is used for making the sanitary pads and also the diapers for our babies. So 200 shillings that is all per kg that has been introduced uh, on chocolate. Uh, 25% uh, percent excess duty on importation of, uh, of uh, fertilized eggs. And this is a raw material for some of the manufacturers who are making the one day uh, old chicks uh, because we have uh, deficiency as far as this is concerned. Uh, even uh, when we're talking about the V, uh, the VAT, we have seen introduction of 16% on uh, on a, uh, on a LPG that is gas, or and 16% also on the modern stuffs that are that are being uh, being sold. Uh, we have seen also there is a, a a circular that has been issued for inflation adjustment on specific rates of excess duty. Uh, so all these, and this is coming at 4.97%. Uh, all these. It was not anticipated by manufacturers, was not anticipated by the, by the consumers. And it's going to have uh, a huge effect uh, on the manufacturing. It's going to have a, some huge effect also on the consumers. For instance, when talking about the 10% uh, uh, excess duty on plastic, uh, even the bucket that uh, we use at home is likely to fall within this, uh, within this uh, uh, bracket. Uh, so if you want to buy a bucket, a plastic bucket tomorrow, uh, you find that there's a position of 10% excess duty. Uh, for yeah. those who are doing painting uh, of uh, vehicles, uh, they're painting homes, or they're making diapers, or they're users of diapers, baby diapers, and sanitary parts. Uh, the 10% yeah. excess duty on dressing, uh, this is going again to affect them. Though we have had a discussion on how uh, the super absorbent polymer that is used for making these diapers is going to be exempted through a court. Uh, so it, it, it's a dire situation, and we are looking at how some of these excess duties can be reversed uh, through yeah. an amendment bill uh, yeah, as, as soon as possible. Because even you have seen some cases whereby some manufacturers or consumers have gone to court are seeking injunction over some of these excess duties that are, that are punitive. Okay. I know that that's a very valid, I mean, or a very nice way of painting at the picture. So my quick and final question and comment from you is, of course, you've mentioned some specific products that are definitely bound to see an increment in terms of costs. That means definitely affecting the cost of living. So what's the way forward if it goes by and if it passes? I know you're still trying to push hard, but maybe I don't know whether it's too late. By the way, is it too late? Uh, so what, what, what are we expecting now? 
Uh, two two options or three options. One is yeah. uh, uh, to seek amendment of the Finance Act 2021. Uh, yeah. Fortunately, this can only happen after six months. Uh, uh, that's that's one way that we're looking at how this can be reversed. Uh, the sure. second is uh, uh, we have the budget proposal uh, <laughs> going on uh, for the yeah. for the budget proposals for year 2022-2023. Uh, this yeah. supposed to submitted by end of uh, August 2021. That's another mm-hmm. way that we are trying to use and see whether uh, uh, it can be amended through the finance uh, bill 2022. But again, we cannot wait, wait until 2022 for the reversal of this because already is going to be punitive on manufacturers and also on consumers. Because on manufacturers, because there's a cons- consumption tax, is going to hurt them as far as the market expansion is concerned. For consumers, is a question of weakening uh, purchasing power. Uh, and then the third one is uh, where we cannot get some window. Uh, manufacturers and even some consumer bodies are willing uh, to head to the court of law to seek injunction over, na- over, over implementation of uh, some of these excess duty. So I would ask uh, the government uh, to listen to the manufacturers and also the consumers and look at how some of this can be changed in a more diplomatic manner. Absolutely. Many thanks for your time, Job, and we really wish you well, especially from us, the consumers, who are going to be hit hard by these effects. Thank you so much, Maina. And right now, I am joined by the head of research, Genghis Capital, and of course, a research analyst as well, Ndanu Gataguta from Genghis Capital as well. We're going to help us understand a few interesting things. First of all, let me just get a comment from the head of research. I don't know, Chachi, from what you have heard from Job Bonjohi, what's your comment on uh, the state of the manufacturing sector in line, especially with what we've seen in the introduction of the excess duty. Uh, thanks, Maina Chege, for having me on the show. Yeah. I absolutely agree with uh, Job's comments around uh, the negative impact that the manufacturing sector uh, is expected to, uh, the negative impact that will be on the manufacturing sector yeah. based on these uh, taxation uh, moves. Uh, look at uh, the manufacturing sector as a whole. Yeah. This is one of the big four agendas mm-hmm. item uh, whereby the goal was to increase the share of uh, manufacturing mm-hmm. uh, from 7.5% where it was yeah. uh, before we got into the big four agenda focus and to 15% share uh, by the end of next year. But right now, where are we? We are even lapsed back. So where we are manufacturing, and then you throw in uh, this, uh, what I could call a monkey wrench mm-hmm. of uh, additional taxation measures, yeah. that is just increasing the costs uh, for, the, for, the, for the sector. Uh, but having said that, uh, specifically for the excess duty uh, that has been, uh, uh, been proposed in yeah. not that is there. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, for the excess duties, there are two ways uh, to look at it. One is where there is an, what they call ad valorem, mm-hmm. in the sense that they just give it, uh, um, say, for a unit of a uh, motorcycle, uh, they just give it a specific uh, amount that needs to be paid as excess duty. Yeah. That's around 11,000 shillings. Yeah. But now, if you, the other side for excess duties now the uh, the percentage whereby what we saw even uh, with the mobile phones uh, or even the bank loans 20 yeah. percent increase uh, in uh, excess duty from 15 percent to 20 percent so those are the two different ways of looking at the excess duty yeah. but uh, there are those specific items yeah. that because their rates are not a percentage. These are the ones that are now uh, given the inflation adjustment every year. So the logic is uh, they look at the average inflation in the previous financial year. So that is between July last year up until June this year. That's the around 4.97 percent. That's the average. And it's supposed to come into effect by 1st of October. So there are those specific products uh, like uh, tobacco, beer, uh, spirits, uh, juices, and other soft drinks that are, they don't have a specific excess duty. So those are the ones that now the inflation rate of adjustment kicks in. But now KRA has brought in this issue of uh, people having some stakeholder engagement uh, with manufacturers, uh, with other stakeholders, just to get their views on that. And I remember last year uh, when the same views were picked uh, by the specific stakeholders, 
most of them were not for this excess uh, annual inflation adjustment because it's just an additional cost on their production cost and also they end up passing the costs to the consumers. Mm -hmm. So that obviously is the thing that we are seeing uh, playing out uh, this time round. Mm -hmm. This time, uh, but now the thing with this process this time round is that uh, parliament will have the final node. In as much as KRA will put a legal notice around 1st of October, just to affect those inflation rate of adjustments, yeah. Parliament has close to like 28 days either to accept or reject those particular, uh, that particular legal notice by KRA. So it could go either way, okay. but more likely than not, if there's noise that is out there, I think even Parliament might reject it. Uh, so that was one of the positives that came out from Finance Act 2020, Parliament having the final say. Hopefully, and we hope that uh, indeed uh, business people, in, especially in the manufacturing sector, and this even cuts across in the SME sector, will certainly have a breather. And so it's over to you, Parliament. Genghis Capital has released an amazing report, the Banking Sector Report 2021, and we are more than curious to know what is the state of the banking sector in the country? But right now we take a break. We'll be right back to discuss that and the findings they have. Welcome back to the Trading Bell Show. Thank you so much for your valued company. As I said earlier, we have the Banking Sector Report 2021, courtesy of Genghis Capital. And Danu Gatoguta was a team lead when it comes to that research, and she's here to help us understand. And as well, we'll look at the market's analysis uh, for the day. Danu, thank you so much for coming uh, to the show. First of all, this is an amazing report that you have here on the sector. And, you know, people are curious to know, first of all, paint for us a picture of the landscape in terms of the banking sector. What, are, what, are, what is the relative feel so far? So currently the banking sector is looking quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, the capital adequacy and the liquidity levels are quite strong. Yeah. Uh, so what banks did uh, in 2020, they really increased their loan loss provisions. Okay. So that's what you saw eat into the profits. But now coming into this 2021, mm -hmm. we have seen uh, banks like Equity just recently uh, released that they have re reduced their loan loss provisions by 66%. And yeah. that's what boosted their earnings to up to 99% increase which wow. is quite commendable. So we'll see um, reduction of expenses, operating mm -hmm. expenses, mm -hmm. increase in uh, government securities investments, yeah. and uh, this is supposed to boost income. Wow, certainly, if, especially coming from a season where I think most banks last year had it rough, but this year we are seeing some amazing reports coming out, and I think uh, as late as yesterday, we already seen some results coming out. I don't know what's causing all this that you've seen so far. So, uh, as I mentioned before, the yeah. cut in loan loss provisions. Yeah. We've seen that banks have really reduced, uh, like for example, equity is using credit risk guarantees okay. in place of provisions. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see um, also banks are boosting up their capital. We've seen them getting loans from banks like the World Bank, IFC, and uh, Africa Development Bank. Excellent. So this is going to boost up their capital levels as well. Mm -hmm. And also we're going to see net interest margins. Remember yeah. that there is structured loans uh, yeah. Um, the interest had been suspended. Now mm -hmm. that the window has closed, yeah. the interest now is supposed to come in uh, and boost the levels of income. Lovely. Let's talk about dividends. And uh, the question should be, what should the investors expect now that you're talking about this bounce back to seen? We expect that uh, banks will start paying dividends again. Yeah. Uh, like for example we've seen Stanbeck Bank uh, yeah. recently they announced that they're going to give an interim dividend of 1.7 shillings per share mm -hmm. um, so this is just a precursor of what's to come equity yeah. as well in the AGM they formalized their dividend policy to mm -hmm. pay 30 to 50 percent of yeah. profit after tax okay. that should start at the end of this financial year so as uh, the earnings season continues mm -hmm. we're going to see more banks releasing their results mm -hmm. so we are hopeful that more dividends will be declared 
lovely setting very good news for investors there and maybe the final question that i'll ask you is the risk factors that we see and probably even the future that we see with this is this is this now rebound completely are we good to go bright future ahead i don't know well, uh, there are certain factors that uh, will come in play. Okay. For example, the COVID-19 pandemic, we're still not out of the woods yet. We're still in there. <laughs> yes, we're still in there. Yeah. And uh, the vaccination uh, efforts still need a bit of picking up uh, yeah. because we haven't reached the levels for herd immunity. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the factors that, uh, because restrictions might be reimposed if the numbers continue going up. So that's one major uh, factor. Absolutely. The rest... Um, Let's say data security mm -hmm. and uh, data privacy risks. Mm -hmm. As well, we've seen now customers have moved to doing their transactions online, yeah. online banking platforms. And Absolutely. you can find you open accounts without even physical face-to-face -face interactions. Wow. So there's a possibility of account takeovers, mm -hmm. identity fraud. So that's a, sec a part that the banking industry really needs to look at. Yeah. Also, there's a shift in regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. We've seen that now, as Churchill had mentioned earlier, yeah. the 20% um, uh, excess duty on loan fees and commissions. Mm -hmm. So that may force banks to pass the, co the cost yeah. to uh, the, the borrowers. Yes, Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for those comments on the research. And by the way, if you want to have a copy of it, visit Genghis Capital or their handles, request for it. Then you can have a keen look at the banking sector report for the 2021. Right about now, we jump into the markets analysis. All right, and part of the top movers and top gainers we are seeing, we are also seeing some banks as well in the numbers. You can see KCB Group, you can see Equity Group as well among the top gainers. And of course, in the top movers, some of the top three there is KCB, Cooperative Bank and Equity Group Holdings. Danu, before I leave you, since you are in the banking sector, I, I don't know what's your comment on this. These are good things that we see. Yes, I would say that yes. the banking sector, investors are quite bullish yep. uh, on these stocks because of the performance that we've seen. That's the recent banks that have uh, released their results mm -hmm. and it's expected that this mo momentum will continue. Yeah. So in the case of KCB and uh, Equity, KCB had recently announced that they had plans to acquire two banks, yeah. one uh, in Rwanda, mm -hmm. that's Bank Popular, yeah. and uh, in Tanzania, Bank ABC. So with these two acquisitions, when it comes to fruition, it will actually push the balance sheet to the past the one trillion shilling mark. Wow. So that's one of the reasons why um, investors are really key on this stock. For uh, equity as okay. well, we yeah. saw the acquisition with the BCDC in Congo yeah. and its uh, loans and deposits have grown tremendously and Absolutely. also its income. So with the increasing importance of subsidiaries with their contributions to the profits, mm -hmm. so that is what is a few of the key drivers as well as the digitization efforts. Wow, lovely. Certainly very many things happening in the banking sector. Churchill, it's not that I am trying to throw you to the losing end, but I see some top losers here. We have Nairobi Business Ventures, Standard Group, Express, Kenya, Chumi, Unga. But I'd like you to comment on one of it. Maybe the Nairobi Business Ventures is one of the top losers. What's happening? Uh, yes, we've seen some uh, jittery uh, or rather some price duration in that particular counter. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the meme stocks. I uh, remember in the US there's this uh, GameStop uh, stock uh, which went all the way over the roof. So locally we have NBV at some point it had a return of 1000% uh, from the lows that it was uh, before it was suspended uh, for trading. So a couple of things have come out uh, in regards to Nairobi Business Ventures. Uh, they announced uh, some acquisitions yeah. and uh, these acquisitions obviously will come at a cost. I think the figure that was put was 3 billion shillings. And then uh, over and above the acquisitions, uh, there is a plan that is supposed to be developed, 15 billion shillings. So I think the market is still digesting uh, the viability or uh, the whole strategy. Uh, remember that Nairobi Business Ventures is started as a show retailer ca counter. Yeah. Now it's pivoting to more or less like a conglomerate, be it in transport logistics, uh, some cement factory, and also some uh, aviation companies. Mm -hmm. So the whole strategy is still 
still not yet been uh, digested by the market and uh, that's what is reflected by the by the by the price and lastly also uh, nbv was supposed to release its financials uh, as at the end of july it's been extended by end of this month uh, so probably uh, when the financials are released is when you can see some glimmer into the uh, where the company is going uh, post the announcement of these uh, acquisitions now, Churchill, uh, the NSC yesterday released a press release where it talked about the NSC market cap topping 2.9 trillion, certainly very good. And the all share index is up by 3.84%. I don't know what you comment on that. Yes, and what comes to mind is the Nairobi all share index. That is a market cap weighted index, yes. uh, meaning that uh, the, the biggest weighting to that index yeah. are those counters that have the biggest market cap and what are we talking about we're talking about safari we are talking about safaricom yeah. which is above 65 yeah. percent uh share of the nsc uh all share all index share. and then we have banks another 20 percent mm -hmm. uh so based on that and if there's any price movement in say safaricom we've seen safari safaricom yesterday yeah. hitting an all-time high of uh, 42 shillings and 90 cents Absolutely. and uh, other banks uh beat kcb uh, and okay. equity which are now following a uh, safaricom in terms of market capitalization hitting uh, 12 months highs in their prices so obviously that will have uh, a positive uh, knock on the uh, index as they say a rising tide lifts all the boats but here the tide is safaricom kcb equity now lifting the whole index so that's basically what it boils down to thank you so much Churchill, for that right about now it's markets 101 and on markets 101 we want to look at the latest news that we have that now you can buy shares using your bonga points Churchill, please expand for us a bit of this uh, basically this uh, deal that was announced by safaricom and nsc it allows uh, Safaricom customers uh, who have registered uh, through the Bonga Points loyalty program, uh, they cannot be able to redeem uh, their Bonga Points uh, into NSA. Currently, the options of redeeming is either through making purchase of Safaricom products or even an Safaricom products like uh, redeeming it in a retail outlet. Uh, but a number of things uh, come out in this whole bonga points one is uh, looking at uh, the the bonga points that are outstanding as per the statement that was given by safari by safaricom uh, it was announced it's 16 billion out 16 billion bonga points that are outstanding there and then the conversion ratio is for every five bonga points you have is converted to one shilling so 16 billion shil 16 billion bonga points yeah comes to 3.2 billion shillings and you just spoke about the market capitalization yeah. as at yesterday that was 2.9 trillion shilling so the value that we are looking to be unlocked mm -hmm. is around 0 0.1 at most 0 0.2 percent mm -hmm. of the market cap as at yesterday so that's a, a, a drop in the ocean yes. that's one mm -hmm. and then remember that these bonga points are earned by retail customers you and me and also corporate customers mm -hmm. so if you do the math more likely than not we'll see the people who are being targeted here are retail customers who are now watching us uh now that they, they can be able to redeem their bonga points so uh that's basically the crux of all uh, what you're talking about but you certainly agree this is a game changer and it has made it easy for people to think about shares right it could be, it, it, it is an opportunity, but ideally it's an opportunity of, uh, because this is money that is not, you, you, you do not earn, yeah. but how do you make good use of it? So yeah. that's where the opportunity lies. All right, thanks a lot. That's a comment on the new Markets 101. I hope you have gotten something out of it. And you know, never say you never know. Keep tuning in on the Trading Bell Show for more of this and for yourselves to keep uh, tabs with what's happening in all matters markets. My name is Maina Shege. Thanks so much for your time. See you next time. Same place, same time. Bye-bye.